Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of, and we now have a name, Pass the Barb. That is right, Pass the Barb, a podcast where we will talk about fishing, hunting, all of what's going on in the outdoors, and really whatever we want to talk about. Uh, we are unfiltered, somewhat educated, and just here for a good time. I'm your host, Adam Bartusik, and to my side is probably the least educated out of all of us, Mr. I Cody Hahn. I, I absolutely admit that. I barely made it through uh, ninth grade. Almost took me tw- <laughs> two times. <laughs> Couldn't pay attention. <laughs> no, and he turned into a musky fisher. When, who, well, guess. that does make a lot of sense. <laughs> So we've got Cody Honor down in the bottom. We have got Will, who is now going by Bill, apparently. Yeah, I've I've had it. Things have changed since the last episode. So mm. I like I, it. I like it. Unreal. Yeah, you know, just shift in identity. Yeah, I like it, right. especially after your topic you talked so much about last episode. This is getting a little different, but okay. And then lastly, we've got Wild Game Cook Ryan Pincala. Yeah, I'm just checking in. That's where we're at. <laughs> All right, episode boys. Two. <laughs> yeah, episode two. <laughs> episode two. Here we go. Um, first of all, how's everyone's week been going? Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Can't complain. A um, little bit of fishing. A lot of unpacking the boat. Kind of getting the boat ready to get sold. So that's that's exciting. That's Wait, you are actually new. getting rid of your boat. Believe it or not. Believe really? it or not. Someone is going to buy that thing. I'm trying to look at you, Adam. Adam, you need to shut your dirty <laughs> mouth right now. I am trying my hardest here. It's a great okay? boat. All right, that's better. That's better. Yeah, I'm trying my it. freaking hardest. Hopefully, by the time one of these here. listeners, I'll share one of marketplace, dude. currently one of our no listeners might buy it which could be any one of you three yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. But one of the 15 that tune into this thing they <laughs> might be interested yeah yeah no it's a great boat has a big front deck definitely has a lot of leaves in it and there might be a record there's no leaves you there's no, no leaves idea. no leaves um the rat already got taken out dude i took the rat out i took the mouse house out of it from earlier this spring it's clean dude, super clean it sounds like runs great, great. great to me. Yeah, it is nice, and it's only a t- it's only four years old, which is the best part. Only got like two years of use on it too. Not even that bad. Not even that bad. Got a brand new. Uh, it's got full, you know, powerhead lower unit all exchanged. You know, the yeah, power pumps could... have been exchanged like ten times. It's running like a top right now. I got an idea. Maybe we should uh, give it away. So like, subscribe, oh. and comment. For a chance to win Cody's boat, what about the that? First, the yeah, leave first us a comment. Hundred subscribers, you get a chance yeah. to take my curse of a boat. Yeah, and jokes yeah. on you. Just in time for Halloween, he'll even <laughs> he'll even deliver it to you if it gets there. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. If it gets there, we've never yeah. said anything about the trailer. <laughs> we gotta find a way to blow this thing up. I think that could yeah. be it. Yeah, yeah, boat. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll give a, give away a pretty lightly used boat i think that'd be a good idea you gotta bring, bring it was on it. it was on sobe's youtube channel as dreamboat destroyed and it got a whole bunch of views on his youtube channel yeah just that's right yeah, yeah. Why, opened. yeah. Mm-hmm. why can't we do something like that you know let's let's do some clickbaiting i got some sawzalls we could <laughs> we do some damage <laughs> but, but like that, an electrician. Uh, maybe we could just give parts of it away yeah, like yeah, chunks that's of the fiberglass. Even better. <laughs> yes. Then everybody gets a piece of it. All 22 can, subscribers yeah. will get a piece. Yeah, we can cut that yeah. up into 100 pieces. The first 100 people who leave a comment or something, what we will do is someone will get like part of the right side and we'll just kind of chunk it up. And then eventually someone will get a quarter of the steering wheel. Someone will get the throttle. Someone will get the throttle cable, you know. And then if you all now this is a great idea. Now, if you all combine all your parts, you all, you know, 50 say people could have a boat that you could use if you can put it back together again. I feel like this is a real opportunity. I mean, that's uh that's communism. Everyone we just got Cody into giving his boat away. So that was a good start to episode taken care of. That didn't take long. Not even selling it. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, the only thing I could think of was last time we recorded till now. When we first started recording, I had just watched Bailey Zappi throw two touchdowns. I thought he was the next Tom Brady, and then we stopped recording, and I turned around, and they lost by 21 to the Bears, and I was oh. like, what the heck just happened? Yeah. That was crazy. Bill Burr was the best part of that entire game. Watching, listening to Bill Burr commentate on the Patriot game was absolutely remarkable. If you haven't watched Bill Burr, highly recommend. Best comedian yeah, I, ever. I like Bill Burr. He's funny. Mm-hmm. Bill Burr is very funny. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will dive into timely news in the outdoors and fishing industry. If anyone has anything, they can chime right in. I will go with the f- – okay, Cody, go ahead. You are first. He raised – no, he raised his hand. It is all you. Um, all right. So there's – there was uh, – this is recent, recent current events. Um, the Bomar hunting scandal. Ooh, nice. Pinkala, are you? Yeah, are you aware of this? Yeah. I have oh, not. I'm, I have I'm, not. I'm in the know on this. I'm in the know on this. I am in the know on this. Educate um, me, please. Talk to me right. like I'm five. I've got an entire thing here. <laughs> yeah, an entire thing here. So the Bomars are, I guess. Well, they have 335,000 followers on Instagram as a couple, but apparently they've been going to this one, what do you call it? Outfitter. Uh, outfitter Lodge and this Outfitter and Lodge to pump up their like, you know, ratings and whatever and pictures and stuff. They were poaching deer on their land with like rifles during bow season, going night hunting, stuff like that. And they've been doing it for years. And those guys got the brunt of the blow. Like a bunch of them are in jail. They're not going to be hunting for like 10, 15 years or something like that. And these Bomars had been going with them to like, not to their knowledge. And maybe they had no idea, but not to their knowledge. They were going to this lodge and, and like being a part of this, this resort, or I don't want to say resort, but lodge outfitter. Where is it? What is it? It was um, Nebraska. Was it Nebraska? Nebraska? Yeah. 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 But there's also another big industry name who had conducted in some of the like, I guess, like night hunting and like shooting stuff. He was part of the Drury Outdoors crew. Um, The heck was his name? I'm going to botch that one. But apparently he's not going to be able to hunt or film for like the next 10 years, which is kind of crazy. And Drury Outdoors cut ties with him immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, he was a someone like a recognizable face, like face. If you watch like the old outdoor channel and stuff, like he was on the show constantly, which is crazy. But the fact that like these people, basically this, these couple pleaded that they were, um, you know, like had no idea it was going on. They had no idea, like just played stupid to get out of, yes. I, maybe, yeah. maybe they had no idea, but in my mind, they probably just like plead, plead the fifth. We're going to play stupid and get the lowest sentence possible. So they got it down to like a year of no hunting and like very minimal fines for how big of a deal it was. It was like 5000 or $10,000 worth of fines. Well, it was um, so essentially they were, they were fined like 50 K. The Bomars were. Yeah. And oh, really? the, they ended up uh, settling like a, like a deal. Right. Where instead okay. of taking on all these poaching charges and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that they, pled guilty to like a conspiracy charge which meant that's what, that they yes. knew yes. or should have known better that this was actually happening mm-hmm. so technically they did like they they entered a guilty plea as part of the conspiracy thing with like it sounded like the deal was that they were going to drop all the other charges against them but mm-hmm. as like an influencer in the hunting world to take on like a i mean you're like admitting that you should have I mean, I don't know if you followed their social media at all, but they're I, framing I it like, well, it was our only option. So we just said that we we would plead guilty to that. So they would drop the other charges. But I think a lot of people are looking at it differently. Like, well, if you didn't do anything wrong, why are you getting fined 50K? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean, <laughs> it, either way, it's like social media suicide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and there's a lot of people that support them like crazy, too. Like the comments mm-hmm. on some of their posts are just going nuclear right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. I don't know. It's a tough, it's a tough one just because it's like, you don't know if they really knew about it. It's hard to say that. How would they not though? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's tough to read in statements. I mean, it's tough to read in statements, but if you like, 
is basically just turning a blind eye to get, you know, like a free hunt yes. or something or whatever, you know, part of their yeah. regiment for the year. Yeah. yeah. And but I mean, they were getting slapped with some pretty crazy stuff, too, because, I mean, they were hitting them for not only like poaching, but then transporting the game animals across state lines. So it was like, you know, multiple, multiple uh, game violations as far as like transportation, too. It was which laundry list of stuff. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I might have missed this, but what were they poaching? Is it all sorts of big game, wild game? Well, like, the, what was it the, anything specifically? Yeah, the outfitter was kind of doing like everything. Like they were had, were doing big game hunts for all different types of species. They were shooting different types of like game birds out of season, turkeys and stuff. They were just shooting them with like rifles, um, just yeah, like crazy stuff. Like they were just kind of letting them do whatever they whatever. wanted at this yeah. point. Yeah, it was like Neverland Ranch for you know a hunter, I guess. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm sure that these hunts were like very expensive like they were pretty cush you know like ten twenty thousand dollars you know hunts and stuff that people were just coming there to just do whatever yeah yeah that so that was nuts. pretty wild and i'm sure that's not over anytime soon like you're gonna be hearing about that for a long time yeah no, i'm sure that'll be a developing one that we'll <laughs> kind of have to keep our eye on that's crazy especially well, from people that far in the public eye like you said over mm -hmm. 300 something thousand like followers that's just on their on their bomar page i read that they collectively have like 1.3 million followers on yeah. instagram alone oh yeah. my gosh yeah that's like big timers people. just caught for yeah breaking every law i mean it like it, it's it's surprising to me that this stuff doesn't happen more often just like not that i have like any proof but in my mind i feel like any way you can get an upper hand or like toe the line people are going to be willing to do now that it's such a like a, a competitive market to get eyes on you that they're going to do the whatever yeah. it it's takes. It's the content, yeah. It's, well, a, you, it's you, a beauty pageant, dude. That's what social media is. is. You know? It's all it is. Yeah. It's just, that's I mean, hard yeah, to say, too. It's like, like, that's, I, I don't know either of them personally, so it's no, like I have, I have no, no, idea no connection to the story at all, but just yeah. from all – because everyone's telling a different spin on it uh, wherever you read yeah. it from. But, I yeah. mean, if that's your job is to crank out social media content, like you said, Cody, you're going to push it as far as you can. You know, and whether that's within the legal grounds or not, I mean, that depends if you get caught or not. Yeah. Yeah. And like, in, I mean, you see it in the tournament fishing world, too. I mean, there's there's a gray line that people will push as far as they can push it. Now, this is yeah. not a gray line. This is a very black and white line um, yeah. of breaking the law or not. But people will push things to the extreme to get it by. And you kind of learn, you know, whether people are good or bad people. But that chase of content, you know. People yeah. are going to go do whatever they have to do for views, evidently, to get big. I mean, as you know, as much as it sucks, I mean, we don't do that. Cody and I got the privilege of going smallmouth fishing for 20-something days and catching, like, nothing. It was great. Super fun. Yeah. I'm sure and, everybody would like to do that. And I always thought, yeah. I, I think it's funny how there's, like, a gray line for certain people, but there's not a gray line for us. It is black and white, but there is a gray line for certain people that yes. can be get stretched here and there. And it is like, whether it's a fishing tournament, outdoor industry, whatever it is, there's like, it is what it is. Like some people you can't afford to penalize that harshly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think yeah. in this case too, I mean, cause I did when it first came out, this was like probably all within the past week. Right. Mm -hmm. like that yeah this, yeah know, it was literally today like this yeah uh, this i think article. it's drug on a long time but like yeah. the actual like decision court decision or whatever is like yep. pretty recent and i did read some of the comments um i know josh bomar who's like the main guy there um put a post on instagram it was like a video of him like explaining the whole yeah. situation right yeah and in the, I feel like they did a really bad job of handling the comments on that post because they were firing <laughs> back at people like, oh man, no, that's, and, that's, that's a, that's answer. a, you post it and you just let the comments go off and you mm -hmm. don't touch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, I, you just really, let it I mean, the one that I read that stuck out to me, cause I, I, I mean, I didn't know you were going to bring this up, but it just was stuck in my brain after I read it was that somebody posted on there. Well, I guess, you know, having a lot of money can get you out of a lot of problems. And he responded to it and said, yeah, normally, but in this case, it didn't help. Yeah. Oh, what a backhanded response, dude. 
that's yeah, a, usually that's a, I do, yeah that's him basically admitting he's like yeah you know what normally i can bribe my way out of this couldn't this time couldn't this time or at know. least like to a, the there's full hundreds extent. of comments on this thing yeah. like it went crazy yeah, yeah i don't like, know i guess we'll have to follow but... that one around for a while yeah. <laughs> and see what happens there that's <laughs> well, crazy though mm-hmm. couldn't um, commit perjury yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Some other timely news that have come out. Um, I got one that was announced recently in the fishing world. Um, just after all the controversy that MLF decided to start for four years, going somewhere else, doing every fish counts and all the bullshit that went through with all of that. And I was hearing about there's so much better. Everything's so much better over here. We're so much better. All the fish you can catch. And they're back to five fish. I saw that. Just today. got announced today. Yeah, unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> They're literally at this point, just like, oh, it's a straw. Oh my god, another. Come on, we gotta get the, we gotta keep this together. We gotta keep this together. Focus, yeah. focus. <laughs> See, I don't understand that because when it when MLF was like new, it was sick. Like where they were going to all those tiny little cool, bodies yeah. of water. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, when they went to the little lakes, it was that. awesome. The format is cool. Like it's a cool format, but yeah, well, like, like they didn't said. even know where they were going before the day of, and now it's like they're just they're like practicing for all these and stuff. Yeah, yeah. you know it's what I mean. Way cool. Like like, yeah, derby. random draw. Yeah, I thought it was. It's way more entertaining that way. But it was it was very was... cool when it was in the off season and it, they had it formatted that way, and they were all filmed in the dark, and then in December, January, February, when there was no other fishing to compete with it or anything, they were dropping those. They were very yes. entertaining. I liked That's them cool. a lot. Yep. And we have the Champions Tour up here in Minnesota, and like it's fun to follow and fun to watch. But like what you got to see with this, and kind of what people have commented too is. They don't want to see the best people in the world continually going down docks, skipping a Senko and catching as many fish as they can. And that's what wins a lot of those events. Um, Mm -hmm. Unless you are like, like down South, that's what happens when you're in Minnesota and fertile places where there's a lot of fish, they get one different ways, but still dock banging tends to do a lot of stuff. Um, But it's just absolutely crazy to me that this is where we're at four years later. And I I think think it's hilarious. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of this, too, because a lot of contracts are up now. The Opens just went to nine only to get in. I mean, it's very it's very obvious that it's a ploy to try to get some people to stay because then they also got rid of the pro circuit. They're Yeah, they're trying their hardest. They're trying to hard, their hardest to keep their core guys. And it, it's crazy, like, uh, in that format, you know, I've talked to some guys that are over uh, in, in that direction, and it just seems to me – like these guys are when they're fishing those events, they just go on idle mode. There's no like serious like drive for a competition other than like two or three people. They're basically just on on easy street at that point. And there's like the competition just seemed like it was not there anymore compared no. to like watching a Bassmaster, like a Bassmaster Elite series or something like that, where people are literally fired up and it was just so boring to watch to me. Yeah. Yep. But I just, I thought that was timely and I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe they yeah, actually did. Hilarious. That. And what's funny is yeah. they made like a social media post like three weeks ago saying like, what would you rather see? It's like, obviously that didn't make their decision, but it's like, why did you even make that post? And yeah. Make yeah. This announcement. As yeah. A league, I, like, why try to compete? Why? I mean, they had kind of their own unique aspect to it that no one else mm-hmm. had. And now it seems like they're just trying to compete with all the other leagues to just keep, keep guys mm-hmm. in or what? Mm-hmm. Cause they know bass is winning and they're, yeah. they're trying to like, they're doing well, whatever why they think bass when they had, they had their own format, they had their own thing going. The, the, Cause I think they're, they're really, really hurting right now. Yeah. I think, I think it is not going even remotely close to as planned. No, the I think millions and millions they're of tainting. views we've been told about are not a real thing. I, don't, I mean, I don't know I, that for a fact, but they're not. <laughs> like, Hands it's, up, it's not a fact, but <laughs> they can be skewed a little bit. Yeah, a lot of it. Remember uh, like five to ten minutes ago when we were talking gray line? That millions of m- views. Millions and millions right in there. of views. It's right in there. <laughs> Give or take a few zeros, it's right there. Yeah, no, not quite happening. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right, yeah. but anyone else got anything else timely that's going on in the outdoor world that I they got found? One here. All right, what do you got, Pink? So I, 
I've been doing a little scrolling and came across this. I don't know if this hit any of your guys' feed. This was like in the past day. Um, I'll pull it up just so I don't, so I get the name right. This was not like on a big media outlet or anything. I just happened on this on Facebook and there'll be more to come on this. But so this guy out of Florida, Brett Lyons, um, deer hunting in Florida, shoots this buck. Apparently, um, either made a bad hit, whatever, and didn't find it. So he got like a tracker, well, you know, with dogs and stuff to come look for it. Mm -hmm. And apparently tracked it uh, to like a river system. And they determined that the buck ended up in the water. And for whatever reason, was you know, wasn't floating, which like deer float typically if they're in the water. But apparently this one was not. Um, I got to pull up the picture here. So here's the here. I don't know. Obviously, if you're listening, you won't be able to see this, but here's the picture. You can go to YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. You can see it. So it's just a guy sitting on the beach of like a river with his buck, right? Okay. <clears throat> so you scroll into the comments and you start getting into the story a little bit. And this picture surfaces that they actually found the buck using mega lot or mega side imaging. <laughs> what? So there's a picture of the oh. deer on the bottom of the river channel that they found. And then the guy hooked it with a rod. And pulled it to shore. <laughs> no way. So that's so cool, dude. Literally, that, that was posted like uh, last night. <clears throat> Talk about wow. never giving up on finding your deer. Jeez, <laughs> I probably would have bailed. Yeah, I would have bailed a long <laughs> time ago. The the pit, the pit, yeah. Here, I'll, I'll I'll text it to you guys so you can see it right now. I but think the, uh, uh, Hummingbird's having that mega live screenshot competition right now. That should be submitted and should win. I think yeah, that would so, win. I found uh, my deer like, with Mega Live. Sounded like at some point this guy was going to go live and tell the full story. Um, like right now, it's just in the comments on on his Facebook. Um, sure. As far, like you wanted to look at it, but Kevin Lyons, and then they had a uh, um, the the name of the guy, the tracking dog guys in there too, or Brett Lyons. I'm sorry, and then Cameron Keen is the tracker. So apparently wow. these dogs are dialed because right. they were able to like track this deer to the water and determine that it was like in the river yeah that's unreal but the the hummingbird nice. shot is wicked first that of all that they were able to find insane. the deer in the river. <laughs> that's the so fact cool. too when they show the i mean they show the pick of bringing it up and it's still got blood coming out like <laughs> they, yeah and they, they did this rapidly yeah like it must have drowned you know or took on water so it sank yeah huh it that actually looks crazy. like it's in pretty good. It's in pretty good shape, you know. Yeah. Like it was down there for very long. Yeah, I don't know if it was wow. day of or what. I like I said. I mean, I right. just got the bits and pieces that were in the comments there, but pretty wicked story. So I'd love to actually hear that's the rest sick. of how that went down. That's sweet. sick that little sick. boat, dude. It's like one of those right? like genie looks like. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. are cool. That that's is badass. awesome. That's yeah. a good one, Ryan. Good that's find. Sick. Good find. That's, that's super cool. yeah. That's that's very good, Ryan. Mine is not nearly as probably cool or interesting, but. I saw this today. I think it's been I think it's been public for a couple of days now, maybe like the last week. But um, the Alaskan uh, government shut down the snow crab season in the Bering Sea for the first time ever in history. So like Rip. snow crab, like not not the biggest king crab, but still like a huge fishery up there. Huge like commercial market. wise. Yeah, giant. And the crazy part is so I was reading this article. So they do like, you know, population surveys or whatever. So. In 2018, um, they counted or they estimated 11.7 billion snow snow crab. So 11.7 billion in 2018, and then this year in 2022, they estimated 1.9 billion. So about an 84 percent reduction Jeez. in the course of Whoa. four years. Deadliest crab catch, cleaning them out. Did, did they did well, they so, specify what what was causing the, the population crash? Yeah, so there's like a bunch of different, like, obviously, like, sort of um, not, what would you call it? I, I guess just speculation at this point. But one of them is like warming ocean temperatures, which um, basically like they, they want cold water. And then I saw this one thing that the warming temps was like sort of wiping out their food source and that they were actually like eating each other. So they were turning like, yeah, yeah, they were like cannibal. They were can funny two episodes in a row they were yeah, cannibalizing i'm a little worried about you bro. <laughs> they were 
they were a cannibal tar- tangent, and then yeah. Okay. So I think that had like warming temps probably had a lot to do with it too. But then like I don't know if you guys have ever looked into like big like ocean trawlers, like commercial trawlers. So it's like basically these huge giant nets that they are weighted so they drag the ocean floor and it's this giant net that just like scrapes bottom and it nets like everything and what they're trying to get is pollock or cod so like you know if you go to mcdonald's get a flay fish like that's that's pollock like that's the that's what they're getting but then there's all this bycatch so like crabs halibut king salmon like and they're supposed to post their bycatch and they do but all that bycatch that they get, they have to throw overboard. So there's like crazy videos and pictures, like grainy, bad quality of like these big boats that are just like covered in halibut. And then it's these guys and they're just dumping them over the side. And they're all dead, you know, because they're in yeah. a net. Yeah. Um, the trawl like industry has like obviously a lot of like money and political power. And so like they're allotted a certain amount of bycatch. But like they have to self-report. So they say like, okay, if unless they have a reporter on board, like, so there are like some like reporters that are like third party essentially. But I read like, I think it's only like 10% of the boats have a reporter. So the rest is like self-reported. So like those guys, like they're not gonna, they don't want to hit that quota, you know, because if they hit their bycatch quota, then they're done, you know? So Mm -hmm. It, it, I think it has a lot to do with sort of collapsing fisheries in Alaska, like especially king salmon and like eh, halibut fishing is is good still, but it depends, you know, what what stocks we're talking about. So I think those trawlers really mop up because they're like they're not, you know, picking what they're picking up in a net, you know. Well, and this one hits yeah. a little bit Every- more close to you, right, Will, since you guide up there or have. I don't know if you still, yeah. up there, but you'd spend quite a bit of time up there. Yeah, I mean, I still go up there. I, I'm I'm not in a. I'm not really fishing for Kings as much anymore because like, it's a lot tougher than it used to be. There's not as many and, and there's a lot of different speculation to what's causing this. But I do think like when you have these huge mile long nets that are just scraping the ocean floor, like things are getting killed that probably shouldn't be, especially when, you know, maybe a species is in trouble already. And then, you know, you bring that in and like every fish kind of counts, especially like on the Kenai where I used to guide, like, that's kind of in peril right now where every king needs to get to the spawning ground. So I don't know, dude, the whole like commercial fishery in the ocean, especially those trawl guys. I mean, there's just a lot of like back to like the gray areas, you know, like they're doing stuff that nobody's going to really see or, you know, catch them. I mean, they're in the middle of the Bering sea or, you know, off the coast of Alaska, like there's nobody like checking and enforcing, you know? So, and they got the money to back it up you know that's when it's yeah. wild because like the management of that is all these like political uh you know chess pieces that it's like these people don't even know what's actually going on out there and they're trying to regulate definitely. commercial fishing <laughs> like definitely dude. yeah it's like follow the money you know like yeah, state right. of alaska and i could go on and on about the state of alaska but you know i mean that's kind of the big revenue barriers commercial fishing because of all the tax revenue they get off of it you know you would you would think like oh they give a shit about the sport fishing because of all the tourism and stuff but they still make more money just off of taxes alone off of these big giant processing plants and commercial fishery boats and all that stuff so yeah they're like you know somebody's getting rich you know and like Mm -hmm. probably somebody's pockets are getting lined um but yeah, I thought that was pretty crazy because, like, yeah, growing up, I'm sure we all watched like Deadliest Catch and stuff. And, yeah, but you know, I remember like that's a lot of those guys went to Norway now. I guess a lot of those really. Guys are they, so they're they filming. Left, they left the Bering Sea. I got to know the Bering Sea yeah. so well through childhood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. More, I knew. Like, I, I felt like I could go do it. Yeah. No <laughs> yeah. Problem, yeah. Bro. <laughs> I think everybody had a time in their life where they're like, you know what? I'm just going to go to Dutch Harbor and I'm going to walk yep. the docks. I'm going to get on one of these boats. Like I'm tough enough. I can do it. I think all um, of us at one point yeah. Googled, what does a guy on the de- deadliest catch make? And we were like, that's yeah. not that bad. I guess it's not. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's pretty good point, you know, like, but yeah, no, no snow crab season. So pretty crazy Dang. stuff shaking out up there. So who knows? Dang, Maybe it'll bounce. Yeah. I'm sure we will see uh, crab prices go way up. Yeah, yeah and I'm not. Really, I don't really buy. Crab. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really buying crab all that. No, neither am I. But no, all right, so crab in Montana. 
you know there's no crab out here yeah crayfish you know and they're they're not bad so yeah <laughs> they're doing good though yeah crayfish. yeah yeah the ruskies are in great shape stocks are through the roof <laughs> all right but that is what's going on in the outdoor world right now and now we are going to bring you to a new segment this is going to be a recurring segment um basically however often all of you listeners want to hear it and whatever topics you want us to go over whether it's outdoors related or not we will do this and we're going to bring you into the weigh-in where we will be uh talking about whatever controversial or uh I'm not maybe not even controversial. Not just any controversial. Topics, it's, yeah. any topics you want us to rank uh, to certain levels, and basically what we're going to start off with will probably uh, ruffle some feathers, and it's going to be the worst type of anglers. Um, so we're going to have <laughs> a little bit of fun with this one. It's going to be snake draft style, and uh, we will be putting up a graphic on our social medias, and you will all need to vote to see on who wins because this will eventually. Uh, determine some sort of order or i don't know maybe we'll end up with some sort of punishment for the loser at the end of the season or something we'll let the viewers decide that maybe we'll make honor like when he evident or eventually loses roll Whether around you win or i mean i, I feel like if i win or lose i'm gonna have to do something <laughs> like it's inevitable well he's kind of a sacrificial right lamb at this point in time <laughs> But um, so we will be going snake draft style, worst type of anglers. And the way we are going to start, uh, pick one will be the youngest in the crew. So I think we all actually have to establish what our ages are here. I think Will's the youngest, but I'm not sure. Will, how old are you? Um, 17. <laughs> Hit us with that date of birth. Yeah, no, I'm 25. So I think I am the youngest. The pink collar. 28. Okay, I'm 29, Hunter. When were you born? Bart? August 8th. August 8th of 93? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm the oldest. April. Okay. All right, perfect. Well, we'll just work around uh, clockwise until we hit Honor. So, Will, you will lead us off. Worst types of anglers, and uh, I will, I guess, try to take notes of this. But, Will, yeah, you can you... pick one. Oh, gosh. Well... Kind of, kind of a lot of pressure. There's a lot of good ones to pick from for for pick one, but I'm gonna go with, yeah, I'm gonna go with bad boat ramp etiquette. Guys that have bad boat ramp etiquette, like there's nothing that is more for, and this is universal. This doesn't matter if you live in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Montana, Florida. Like everybody goes to the boat ramp. You got to launch your boat, you know, and like I just hate it when the guys pull up and pull like basically block the access, you know, like they're like nose, nose in front of it and they get out and then they got to get the boat all set up. They got to take their cover off. They've got to get the, and I get like, cover, I definitely, dude, cover off is the biggest one. Oh my God. If yes. someone rolls in with a cover <laughs> yeah. and they're sitting in the line and they're like, let me yeah. fold this up perfectly. And it didn't even rain. Yeah. And like, if you got your cover on your boat, no biggie. Just pull into a parking spot and take care of that. Do not get in the flow of traffic. You know, that's my thing. Like, I'm pretty, and I assume you guys are too. Like, when I get into the line, like, I'm very fast. Get out, like, undo the straps, you know, get everything ready, like, ready to go. Like, pull in, drop the boat in. I'm not, like, sitting there. Like, I've seen guys, and I'm sure you have too, like, sitting in the boat, like, rigging rods, like, as it's on the trailer. It's like, let's do that when it's in the water. You know, like, yeah. I just think it's infuriating and also too i want to like clarify like i don't really have a problem with people that like struggle backing the boat in the water like no, i no, like no. completely different i i get that like and especially like holiday weekends like it's kind of fun to watch that like whole thing yeah, unfold. Marriage, like you watch marriages and on memorial yes. day weekend every year yes for yeah. sure like every year you know and but like i get it because like everybody was there at one point where like you weren't great at backing a, a trailer into the water like i got no problem with that it's the preparation side of it like where just like you should have it pretty dialed in where it should take no longer than like five minutes and then like get your boat in the water and like get out of the way so that's my number one pick yeah husbands out there don't put uh your wife in the position of backing up for the first time ever and start yelling at her as you're backing up that is yes yeah your I poor enjoy wife I enjoy yeah, your it. poor wife but i think it makes it go faster yeah it makes it go faster i've backed in probably three to six trailers a year at minnetonka yeah. with women in that situation of their husband <laughs> just yelling at them and i'm like that's it's fine i'll get it my favorite is when he gets that's in the probably front one of the best 
bodies of water in the country to Just watch it happen. Yeah, it, it is incredible. If Bay you, specifically. Yes. No, if you want a holiday weekend of, or you want a, ho- a weekend of fun, not fishing or golfing on Memorial weekend, get a case of beer, go sit at the Grays Bay access, bring a chair, just chill. Yeah. You know, or, maybe help them pull yeah. a few strands of milfoil off every <laughs> once in a while. You'll have a good yeah. time. The best yeah. is when they, the husband actually gets out of the boat and goes into the truck and he's actually worse than the wife. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah. Is classic. Yeah. I like see that. Some guys it's, just tear yeah. off like, like there's something wrong with the trailer. I got to get away from this embarrassment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why did you embarrass me like this? Why? Yeah. yeah. Just fear. And the line, the line is backing up, you know, yes. and you're like talking yeah. to the guy behind you and you're just like, what is going on? I remember there was one time this summer I was putting the drift boat in on the Madison river and it was busy. It was like July, I think June maybe. And, uh, there was like, you can rent drift boats and rafts here in, in, in Bozeman. And, um, like a lot of people do it, but, um, these guys had, had rented a raft. It was a rental and they had set the raft, like pulled it off the trailer and then set it on the ramp, not in the water, just like right on the ramp. And then they were like gathered around it, like just kind of like hanging out. Cause it's too small ramp, you know, so you can use both sides. Well, only one side was open. So there's this old guy behind me and he's got his drift boat and I get out and he walks up to me. He's like, what the fuck's going on up there? <laughs> I'm like, <"I> <laughs> he's like here come with me so like, this guy's like crusty and old we walk over there and he's like grab that side and like we cut through the people each grab a side of their raft and we drag it off to the side set it down and then we both go and launch our boats like he doesn't say a word to these people i don't say anything to him i'm like i'm with this guy you know like <laughs> he didn't want to fight. like i want this guy on my side like i'm not really worried about it you know but yeah that's my number one pick bad boat ramp etiquette that's a solid pick all right, Pinkala, what do you got? Pick number right. two, round one, pick two. All right, I'm leading off strong here. So I'm call I I got names for all these. I'm calling this one Danny Decals, and uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we all we all know this guy. He make he makes his way around. So uh, this this is the guy that uh, he has a, a full vehicle wrap, but it only covers the uh, back driver's side window of his rusted out suburban. <laughs> yes and he does it on the driver's side so that when you pass him on the highway uh you can see that he buys bagley crankbaits yeah and uh, (laughs) that uh that to me might be the worst of all time because he's got he doesn't even have any fishing stories if you actually get to talk to this guy at the ramp he tells you about like his uh nephew jake who caught a five pounder at that lake like in 1997 and uh, he's been throwing the same, the same wacky word set up for his whole life, like this. I it, it's without fail too, and it's like the same type of vehicle. I don't know why these guys always pick that. It is. Yeah, I know you've like seen it. I guarantee you, you've seen this no. guy. Yeah, that was perfect. You explained it perfectly. Perfect. Pick off. Yeah. I know yeah. exactly who you're talking about. Like you've seen, perfect. and it's a maroon. Suburban. It's always a maroon suburban. <laughs> yeah, it's we call, them Ra- we call them Randys. They're all Randy's. Yeah. And it's so funny, dude, because that is definitely one that, like, crosses state lines. Like, it's <laughs> dude, everywhere. Yes. Like, He's everywhere. I don't care where you're fishing. Like, there's a guy, and he is just stickered up to the max. And, and it's, it's like, only on the window. You... Yeah, and it's like, why are you giving out, like, what did these What did these brands give you? Nothing, dude. I go incognito. I don't want people to be able to recognize my truck, you know, yeah. like. I, I don't I don't want extra attention. It's like, yeah, this guy rolls up and he's got a Minn Kota sticker that's three by two, you know, like <laughs> what, what, what that. And like I can say this too. I you know, like when I first started fishing when I was like 15, 16 years old, like I had a little Lund Rebel, you know, and like, yeah, I threw some decals on there. Like I thought it was pretty cool, you know, but I wasn't 50 years old, you know. Like right. I, I yeah. just thought it was cool at the time. So I, I mean, I guess I kind of get it, but yeah, maroon suburban never fails. Once, once <laughs> you, yeah, like, once you see the maroon suburban and it's got conflicting, <laughs> competing company stickers right next to each other, yeah. that's when you know. Well, there's that's also like, like, yeah, plus or minus three fifty stickers on this window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then yep. sticker over top of sticker that's flaking off. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, Pink. Yeah. That's a good one. I uh, I will yeah, go perfect. now with round one, pick three. A um, lot of lot of great <laughs> options out there, but uh, and I'm actually going to go to the ice fishing world. 
and uh, might get a little bit of flack about this, especially when this first episode is going to come out. But uh, they're early ice Red Lake walleye experts. They are my round one pick three. Um, the people who devote their whole ice season to two weeks on Red Lake, and they tell you all about how they have their favorite spot. They drag up their permi. And that, that's the other thing. It's not even really early ice. They technically drag up like their permi when there's eight to 11 inches of ice. But... You're talking about the guys that when you can first get a wheelhouse out on, is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking yes. like you can first walk out on? No, 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 no. Not okay. first walking guys. Cause those like, okay. it's the people who it's not the people who like go up there and they're like, okay, it's a first fishable ice. I'm going to go drill a few holes, catch a few walleyes, have a little bit of fun, whatever. It's yeah. the people who have the permanence that are like i am dialed on red lake and we've all ran into them you know exactly what i'm talking about they go there every single year they keep their house there until about christmas and then you never hear from them the rest of the year or they go back up to red and then they say the bite's slow because there's three and a half feet of ice on an eight foot deep lake <laughs> is it is this the same guy that when they go out there they're just like they're, they they want to tell you that they went out of jr's yeah. <laughs> yeah they got the fry so you know the, the we, fry. We went out of and, yeah. and we had a great fry <laughs> i think it's a good I, I think it's a good pick adam is it a first round pick i don't i don't i don't think so i think you could have held that until the fourth round probably but okay here comes the uh, shade a good, a good it was a good pick i get I, it and it's a good I, pick but i'm playing the crowd for the time of the year because we all know okay. exactly when this is going to be coming out, and everybody yeah. will be thinking it, not just me. He doesn't yeah. have a deep no, roster, so it's fine. Uh, it's, yeah, got, it's fair. You got, I got some deep ones. I know Cody isn't going to take a few of my others, too. So we'll I'm, see. No, I'm it's, happy with it's a, it's it's a good that. pick. It's a good pick. Everybody knows that guy. Like, And you kind of hope that that guy invites you up, you know, because I don't want to set up a wheelhouse. You know, I like going to them when they're set up, holes are drilled, it's warm, beer's cold. I like yep. that. No, <laughs> exactly. All right, Cody, you can lead us off. You got back to back. You're at the end of the snake draft. Oh, you I, got? oh perfect. So perfect. round round one, pick four. What are you taking? Round one. So I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to pick which one I go for first. But I'm gonna say, and this this goes. It could be. I'm gonna use the word co angler as could be oh, a no. tournament co angler or a person that you are fishing with. As like a person that's in the boat, can I do that? Is just that a lot? Generally, just generally, someone who's in the it boat. It depends how you use this, but okay. How? What's the? I guess the. Go ahead. The. <laughs> we will we will determine how broad this is and see if yeah, we yeah. take Keep, others away from us. Dial it in here. Why aren't we catching anything? <laughs> Why aren't we catching anything, guy? That guy. It that could guy. be yeah, and if you're a tournament angler, especially like where you have a co-angler that you're fishing against, like basically against or who is fishing for themselves in the boat. The why aren't we catching anything after about an hour of fishing is absolutely straddling. Just whatever it is just sends a nerve up my up my spine or whether you're guiding someone. Why aren't we catching anything? You're like, well, I can see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, I, <laughs> that that is hilarious to me. Yeah. I think that's a that's a good one. But like I and I've gotten that a lot when guiding the question, like, is this a good spot? Like it's like, yeah, nope, been fishing it for no. years. Haven't haven't caught one here yet, but God Honestly, I think today might be the day. You, know? you didn't bring me lunch. Yep. You get nope, what you get. Is, I just kind of <laughs> picked this one out and figured we'd pull up, which I've, in the past I've done that for sure. Like you got to fill some time if you got eight hours, but generally speaking, yes, it's a good spot. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think there was fish here. Yeah. That one, that one always stuck with me or at least struck a chord with me, especially if you're like, say you're like guiding or, or fishing like a high stress tournament where you're trying to focus and bear down. And the person in the back of the boat is, is like nagging just nagging mm -hmm. at you all yeah. day long. Yeah. That's a tough one. It's a like, tough we one should, to deal with. We, we should move. move. Like, we, we should move. move. Like, we should fish over there. Like, I like when clients say that. Like, well, what about like that bank? It's like, well, what about it? Cool <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. go down that road. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Get yep. a good look at it because we're not fishing yep. it. 
and <laughs> foot and a half deep yeah. covered in weeds. So yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. Cool. Yeah. And that's yeah. a good, like it's broad, but it's good. Cause it applies to like, like you said, mm -hmm. pretty much anybody that could be in your boat, whether it's a, a co-angler, even a buddy, you know, like everybody's All got right. buddies. Yeah. I don't get Cody. So then you get another pick, Cody. Yeah. Yeah. What's, oh, your, okay. what's your round two pick one? Um, my round two pick one are the guys with barstool biology. And this goes out to a lot of the Midwestern anglers, especially the uh, people who say that either A, muskies are eating all the walleyes, or B, smallmouth are the issue to the entire ecosystem's issues that are going on. And I will said kill every single one of these I catch, whether, whether it's legal or not. It is my mission to absolutely genocide this species of fish so, and it's hilarious to let them talk sometimes hilarious what, what am i naming this um <laughs> for the graphic is this uh the old timer who kills all I, the I like that, eating the that walls barstool biology is good barstool biology otherwise you could put like a, a guy with like a very you know a mustache like this next to it or something <laughs> <laughs> If you are listening on the podcast, um, Cody looked like someone in the 1940s who was somewhat popular in Germany. Yeah, somewhat one of those guys. Popular, <laughs> extremely he's, popular. He, he, Where was I wrong? The man, the man was a, a young gay boy who came up with art, and he came to the rise of power. I mean, everyone's got a goal. That guy had made a goal. History. Just, ended, just he made history. Just ended up being, you know. On the wrong side of it. On the wrong side of it, I guess. But yeah. yes, barstool biology. That those are the guys that kill me. Those are the ones where I shut oh. up and I just listen. Hell of a public speaker for sure. Yes. God, he <laughs> nailed it. Yeah, he could command a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so bar right, we, uh, barstool wanna... biologist. That's what will be on the graphic. Okay. Barstool biologist. Got it. I got it. I think. Is that what you want? I mean, to yeah, make yeah. Sense. I, have, I also yeah. have in parentheses old schooler killing game fish. There we go. There we yes, go. Yes. That's perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. I need to actually pick mine now. Um, we're going to go down a similar line that Cody went down with his round one pick for round two pick. Um, we're also going to go with a co angler. And this is, if you have fished the Bassmaster Opens, FLW Tour, or the Toyota Series, you know this man, and you most likely get paired with him in your first one, and you immediately get to experience him. And that is the local. <laughs> <laughs> and you go out there, and he tells you, like, yeah, man, I fished the BFL here last weekend. Tells you all about it, and how they were all around <laughs> fish. And then he's like, yeah, we weighed in two for four pounds. And you're like, why did we just waste all this time talking about that? Or you're just running down the lake. And he's like, caught 15 pounds there 10 years ago. You're like, what? And it's all day, all day, all day long. Yeah. Yeah. Nonstop. Tracked him there in the Thursday nighter in 2008. Man, we took it home. Eight. I was going to say 95. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and you're like running 75 miles down the lake and he's pointing at you and looking like, oh yeah, like, there, there, like, like what? Like, he's like, oh, back in the winter of 2002, huge school, smallmouth pulled up there. Huge school. Like it's July in the Alabama river. I, I, you know what? I'm just going to put my ear, ear, like my earbuds in and. You can talk to me. You can talk to my back, I guess. They're following up that comment with like, yeah, but the bushes were in the water then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. They go through this whole long description. They're like, you know, now that I think about it. But then the one bushes were turn. in the water. <laughs> well, there's always an explanation. dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay. So there was, th and this is like the best part with it, too. So I was fishing an open at Grand Lake, and I, I had slung an ear. Everything had sucked or whatever. So I was like, mind you, I'm like, whatever. This sucks. I'll, I'll go wherever my co-angler might want to go here. Um, I think this was actually, yeah, yeah. But he was like, hey, um, I've caught some over here. And he kind of said it like three or four times, and I was like, I haven't caught anything on my first few spots. I don't really have anything going. My pattern's gone. I'm so like, sure, let's go do it. And there's nothing better than you actually go to one of your co-spots. You pull in and you fish for 10 minutes. And he's like, 
oh, you know what? I don't think this is a cut. I think it's actually in this creek. And <laughs> it's like 10 miles further down. And that, that totally happened. And uh, yeah, but anyways, my pick is the local. And uh, we will move on to uh, Pinkala. Pinkala, round two, pick two. All right. So this this one... This one I was hoping no one else was gonna pull. So here we go. So I'm 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 going for my second pick on that deal. The uh the bite window guy. <laughs> oh god, you're gonna okay. This is personal. I personal. I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so this is personal from the copy chronicle. I'm not here. No, I you're you're just you're just going where you want to go there. I don't know. So the uh <laughs> All right, let let me explain. So I would say on this one, there there's there's kind of two, and not all bite window guys are the same. There's a specific bite window guy here, and in this one, this is the guy that no matter when a fish is caught, it's in a bite window. Okay, okay, this is better. Yeah. <laughs> the, I'm sorry, I attacked matter. you it immediately. Be, it can be any species, any day. You're not catching them, and finally you catch a fish, and this this is the guy that's like, here we go, bite window is open. <laughs> Let's yeah. go back to that spot that we didn't catch anything for two hours on. The window yeah, they're, they're there now. Yeah, oh, we just oh, opened totally. up Pandora's box. It's <laughs> on now, boys. Uh, <laughs> hold on to your horses because it's about to happen in a big but as, way. As Bart was saying, that this whole bite window fiasco goes much deeper than this, but we'll save that. I think that's a good that's a good pick. <laughs> that's a good pick. It's applicable to most every species. Yeah. So and yeah. It that's certainly probably pick. exists, but not all the time. So all right. <laughs> Bill Stolsky. Okay. Round two. So I second, yeah. Second round, last pick of the second round. Um I'm gonna go with oh man. I'm gonna go. Ding 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 ding. I know. Ding, ding, ding. I know. Um, I'm gonna take one that like I think might get skipped. Guys that have to take a picture with every fish. <laughs> not every like obviously not every single fish, but it's the full blown like photo shoot. And I get it. I like to flex on the gram a little bit too, but it's like the whole like we're gonna stop and take like 10 minutes like let's put this fish on the live well like let's get the boat position just right like i like oh this is like wrong like let's let's get everything just so dialed in that we take this awesome picture and i'm all about like good fish pictures if it's a really big fish but if it's like i don't know in terms Average. of bass, it's like yeah if it's like a four pound smallmouth like nobody really cares about like you can make it look six pounds that's awesome especially now with like the 0.5 and stuff but like that just like really grinds my gears, especially if you're fishing too. Like, and and let's say the fishing is good, and you don't want to stop fishing because like you're in the the bite the window, juice. like you're yeah. on, yeah, like you're <laughs> on fish, and like your buddy catches one, and it just turns into like, and I take pictures of fish all the time, but like quickly, you know, like get them in, get them out, like get back to fishing, and when it turns into like the production where it's like, dude, like can we just be done you know so that would i guess that would be my my picks guys have to take like i'm all about a good fish picture but i i don't know what they should show up on the graphic as like um overly take pick with every fish overly photogenic no i guess take yeah i think that'll play well in the graphic yeah take take pick with every fish that would Got be it. my yeah i think well will you get the privilege of uh round three pick one so you're up right away again. Snake draft snake caught back. up. Yeah. Snake back he got, Um He got lost in the snake draft. That okay. just happened. He had no clue. So then I guess for my first pick of round three, I am gonna go with I'm I'm gonna go with the uh what I call the, the meat whores. And I'm gonna ex explain it a little bit, but this is more from a, guy. a fine line here. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. So this is more from a guiding perspective, especially in Alaska. If you're fishing a salmon fishery in a river, I've seen this happen a lot where people will come in and they get so like hell bent 
on getting their limit, you know, like on the new Shigak, for instance, where I'm guiding now, you, you're allowed five silvers per person, which is a lot of, that's their big fish. So that, that's a lot of meat, you know, and it's sort of like, if they don't get their five that day, like it was a failure, you know, because they get so hyper-focused on like, we want to bring back a bunch of salmon back to Tennessee or to Texas or wherever they're from, which I get, but it's like, if they don't get their limit, they don't kill like people get so bloodthirsty. Like if they mm -hmm. don't kill their limit of salmon that day, it's like, man, what the heck, man? You know, like I, they don't like, usually they're not like that, but you can tell, you know, there's like this high pressure to like kill fish, get them in the, came to the like, grocery store harvest. Yeah, exactly. And I get it. People pay a lot of money to come to Alaska and they want to bring salmon home and whatnot. And you will, you know, like, can only fit 50 pounds of fish per person on the float plane anyway so like you know hate to say it but <laughs> kill five every day you're probably not bringing them all home so yeah i would say the meat and that probably translates down to to like obviously growing up in, in the midwest like guys that go out and just like have to kill a limit of crappies or bluegills or wallet whatever it is like they just have to get the limit where maybe you really don't need that many fish you know like especially if you're fishing a lot you know maybe Instead of 10, take home five, you know, like, I don't know. I think it's a, it's sort of a mind, a mindset that can be not great to, uh, to a fishery. So, yeah. That's a good one. I like Wisconsin it. Wisconsin ice fishing panfish. That's, that's yeah. what it is. That's why you guys, it's hard to actually catch a keeper bluegill mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. Yeah. They hit seven inches. <laughs> well, keep, dead. Keeper bluegill. That's in your own imagination. Please back, play, man. Back in the day. <laughs> back yeah. in my day. Yeah. Uh, and right. I should say I'm all about I'm all about keeping fish too. I like keeping fish, but I think there's a, a level. Uh, no, no, you know. there there is a fine line. We we all know exactly what you're talking about. Um Yo. pink round three, pick two. All right. Your third pick. All right. So I'm going uh I'm picking, I'm calling this one the purest. So this one is Sims uh pro. What? Sims guy? Yep, Sims guy? nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Next. Um, <laughs> we love Sims guys. Just making fun of Cody. So I'm calling this one out as the guy that uh, this is typically when you're not catching them throughout the day. And uh, they're not changing anything. He says, if they're not eating this, I don't even want to catch them. <laughs> 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 slinging that crankbait all day definitely should have been skipping docks but just won't take it just will not admit that he's doing the wrong thing and he's just gonna ride or die uh, i like That's, it i like that one i we fall in, i fall into that trap quite often ryan <laughs> if, they're, if they're not biden a red october too well they're just ain't biden they just ain't Biden. <laughs> not possible it's not yeah. possible can't can't be done <laughs> And that 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 then the kid on the dock catches one on a night crawler. Yeah, while you're yeah, out there like fucking rubber, right? You see, yeah, you see a guy with like a Ned rig out there. He's like, "How big is this thing?" And it's stone cold dead. I'm like, I don't know, like a forty nine or something. <laughs> and it, it, it tangle up in the Walmart net. Oh yeah, blue fish yeah. strand tied. Yep, yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. yeah. That is a good one. All right, um, I am. Ooh, which one do I want here? Okay, I am going to go with the uh, Japanese JDM tackle expert. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> so the guy who uh, he only throws mega bass rods. He has all mega bass jerk baits, and I don't know. There's so many other brands too, but I can only think of mega bass right now, which they obviously make good stuff. But he only throws it because of that is the only thing you do throw. Yes. Well, it was made in Japan, so there's not another bait that is supposed to be thrown. Now that he figured that out just three years ago, right? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. generally they're pretty <laughs> new into the whole market and everything. Um, they might have just started a YouTube channel where they talk about literally everything else, and they don't actually do any fishing remotely with it, typically as well. But uh, yeah, yeah, the JDM or Japanese tackle <laughs> expert. It's yeah. <laughs> what's jd what's jdm is that a is that standard? japanese direct market my son the best of the best the cream of the crop lake biowa <laughs> yeah, we got a little I'm not, 
saddles on them. We're walking the banks down little tributaries and stuff with our little like spider looking ru- pieces of rubber. And... <laughs> I'm not really plugged into that scene, but I, I, I could, I could get into that. I think. Oh, I can be, I can be a Japan, uh, a JDM snob, but I don't know. Don't get me type. wrong. I order plenty of the JDM stuff, but I don't go around telling all everybody it's the absolute best thing. It's the only thing you need to throw. I spend like sure. way too much money on it, get it, and I go, I should probably throw this, and then it sits in my boat because I'm like, that was a thirty dollar crankbait. I don't want a pike to bite it. And then we're, <laughs> yeah, there's no, no yeah. and there's and no pike in, in Japan. So yes, and there's no pike in Japan. So <laughs> we're running into these problems. They only um, use mega so. bass rods and stuff like. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, this is the greatest. This is the yes. greatest. And we we all know, like, literally, I said that, and we all thought of someone mm-hmm. in the bass world. Anyways, you thought of someone. It's guaranteed. So that is, that is my other one. Um, nothing against JDM, or I mean, I guess anyone who throws that stuff. It's just you don't got to preach it all the time, man. <laughs> Cody, round three, pick four. All right, these are gonna be. I'm. I'm just gonna throw myself in the coals here. You know, if you like doing these things, great. Not a big fan of them. That's all it is to it. With my third pick of the draft, the rigged out kayak fisherman. Oh, and here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> we already lost a bunch of viewers. <laughs> So let's just get her going. going. You're supposed to get right. her people. Okay. And I'm not saying that if a kayak is your only only way to get out on the water, I'm totally cool with that. Whatever whatever you got to do to fish. But I'm talking about the, the person who has a kayak. talent with mega imaging and a pan optics and all this like stuff, which racks up a kayak up to like 20 something grand. I'm like, yeah, buy a let's, boat. Let's think about this here real quick. You could buy like a decent little bass boat, you know, for that amount of money and get on bigger water and catch more fish. But you're stoic. I get it. You're a stoic human being. They like yeah. sneaking up on them. They like actually, yeah, they sneaking up on them. Out deep Healthy, all day. But now that's like, it, it's like this weird niche, like cool thing to do. And I'm like, what are we doing here? My doing? favorite is the souped up kayaks that uh, don't actually even have like pedal drive or an oar. They have an Ultrax in them. Yes. Yep. There we go. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. It, it like completely just gets rid of the entire kayak. Like if I'm thinking of a kayak, I'm thinking of like, okay, the pedals are a little bit cheating, but like an oar or something I have to row and I'm actually getting some exercise. Like that's the whole thing with the mm-hmm. kayak. No, I just use my remote. And like pedal me around at going at like seven miles an hour on this overpriced <laughs> little like chunk dingy. of plastic that was 3D printed. Yeah, it was 3D printed. That should only cost probably twenty dollars over in some Chinese sweatshop that got brought brought over. That stuff is ridiculous to me. I'm like, I like see these people putting in their kayaks. I'm like, what is going on here? They got like a Solex 12, like the Pan Optics 12. They are into it. They are on it. Like trying too hard. Trying. I got to chime in only because the pink color is a kayak. Direct direct here. Yeah, I knew I was gonna. I knew I was gonna strike a nerve. I'm one of them. So, and as an avid kayak angler from my entire life, mm-hmm. I don't have any of the cool stuff. My shit is dust. Like I no. got some dumpy. You are not one of those people. I have watched you drag a kayak three now, miles out of a marsh to get I to do. 494, then walk three more miles to get when back you, to your truck. When you have True. a kayak trailer, that's okay. a different story. Yeah, when you're yeah, you need an actual boat launch for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I will say nothing gives me more pleasure on because there are there are lakes where it's like that's the only thing you can put in there. Right. Whatever. Like there's just no right. other access. Nothing gives me more pleasure than watching this. He's got the dude milk crate in the back with like 30 rods sticking straight yes. up. Yes. Mike. Yes. First cast. First cast loads up right into everything. <laughs> well, bam. Just completely <laughs> shot. Nothing gives me more pleasure than that. Watching that happen. It's, when that happens, it's time to go home, brother. Because I'm talking like, you know, kayak. you're talking like one rod, two rods max. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, like, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good solid pick, Cody. That's I like, like that you one. said, 
when it comes to be like twenty thousand dollars worth of stuff on your nice. back, we just uh, and they're they're going out in the Great Lakes thinking that this is gonna manage like. Yeah, is that a good idea? You know, let's let's not do that. No, I'm really hardcore. Like I'm hardcore kayak fisherman. Like, oh, you're a hardcore kayak fisherman, are you? That's nice. <laughs> so, do you hold hands out there and yeah, yeah. you're gonna get roasted time. for that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's, Absolutely. there's an entire. You're gonna an, get roasted. Yeah. I yeah. know a bunch of kayak fishermen too, and I'm like, I know two I, or three guys who are really good that have won a lot of money lately on it. But I still give them shit all the time for it. I'm yeah. like, dude, just get a boat. Like you'd win just as much. You're like, that good. Yeah. And it's like it's like a cool option, right? Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nice to have. <laughs> it's a. Like, it's an arrow in your quiver. You know. Yeah. 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 All right. Good one, Cody. All right. Round four, last round of the draft. <laughs> round four, pick four. Okay. And I'm going to take a couple people's probably. Um, and I'm going to hit it down because I know many of these type of fishermen and it's okay. Still like you guys still make cool stuff. Um, but just to generalize it, I'm going to say fly fishermen. But I'm going to say more, more exactly the gear versus like pure or whatever you want to call it. The gear, like people who are against gear fishing. So you could call it like fly fishing only. Like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what they would be. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like had, having had a couple, of, I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to turn this around. It's okay. It is okay. Yeah. That for you're the, it's, it's okay. It's the this is a safe only, place. Cody's a Sims pro. He'll talk to you. You, you guys are all Sims guys. It's all safe. It's the only good. counts only. on a fly, guys. There, yes. that's it's it's We're, that demo. Like, which I'm so much more pure than you. I'm so much more pure than you. Like, oh I yeah, can't it's, even, it's the I can't highest. Even, oh, oh, it's the you, highest level you can reach for heaven, brother. He's what, the chosen would you, one. Would you would you huh? catch that musky on? I bet it was on gear. Like, no, I wasn't on. I wasn't doing drugs at the time. What the? What are you talking about? It's not, that's like. I mean, yeah. they're big yeah, fish, but I wasn't on steroids or anything. I mean, I, I right? Don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what do you will not to yeah, take a shot at you, here? but I think of you with this every time when we were, and we'll dive into this eventually. Um, one story, but back when we were with Parrick fishing on uh, uh, Schwamigan, and you caught that giant. I think it was a steelhead. And um, well, they, they call them steel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they don't whatever. touch the ocean. So in my opinion, it's not a steel. But that's okay. that's a story for another yeah. time. Here, I've once again, we're getting into snobby, snobby trout fisherman stuff. Late, but uh, that's what I should have had. That's what but, I should have yeah. had. It. Snobby but, that would... <laughs> but uh it is when he got back, he literally goes, I think I'm just gonna move out and only fish trout and salmon for the rest of my life. I'm just gonna be a Sims guy. Look, and he look literally what happened, did. Dude. like I thought it was a joke. He literally did it. Look what happened, man. Yeah, it's uh, but yeah, anyway, I yeah, and the only and I don't, my guy. Yeah, I think that's that's a great pick because I fly fish all the time, but I also fish with gear too and conventional. You know, I like at the end of the day, I like to catch fish, and sometimes fly fishing is not a great way to catch them. You know, sometimes you got to bust out the spinner. You yeah, know, get them going on that. So and I have I have nothing wrong with fly fishing. I think it's really cool, but I think like the and I'm just gonna shoot myself in the foot here i'm gonna say like the loaded down sims guys with like they're like brand new like ripping off tags as they're walking out to the river or whatever and like they got the full flies which Dude, they may have tied themselves or something that's, and, like that's every day in bozeman <laughs> if you go to fish anywhere Dude, I, I got a little saying, I said, you don't, I don't trust people with clean waders, you know, because like my waders are destroyed because they're covered in salmon blood and eggs and yeah. all kinds of nastiness. I'm really proud of that. But then you can see the guys pull up and it's like, they're just perfect. Perfect. Like, what do you like? You must wa wash those things every day. That's amazing. I've, I've had people ask me like, why do you have like blood stains on your weight? Like, have you been killing these trout? Like, like no, I'm like, it's from Alaska, <laughs> dude. Like I don't kill trout, but like, yeah, I killed the fuck out of salmon. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's a, that's a good pick, Cody. Yeah. The fly fishing only, only counts on the fly. Yeah. That's a solid pick. Going back to back picks with the yak and then the fly guy. Oh, dude. just really calling it. Just really up in my mm. count here, man. Yep. I'm going to have, oh, I'm going to have so many good DMs and stuff. It's gonna be great. 
Uh, I have I have like three or four of them that I really wanted that I thought other people were going to take. Um, shoot. Well, I think I'm going to go with, um, maybe I'll make this a little bit more generic. Um, I ha- have it as the walleye guy, but I'm just going to say the guide. <clears throat> or just what? the fish. Oh, you man. have to. You have to I'll say the walleye guy. No, I'll do the walleye the guide. guy. Okay. The walleye the... guy, just listen. The walleye guy who drags live bait and says they're a smallmouth guide. <laughs> <laughs> Is that going to play on the graphic? That's a lot. Do we want to just, I will do do just really want to little the, font. the name out or? I will do really little like, font. There's a lot of is... animosity towards someone. Do you <laughs> want to call it the guy mouth. that fishes for smallmouth with live bait? Is that no, what your the angle no, that's is? Not, I don't necessarily like, I don't, I don't fish for smallmouth with live bait, nor did I really think people need to or should. But uh, it is the specifically the people who guide who then say, yeah, I'm a smallmouth guide. And you're like, oh, cool. What you been catching them on? They're like, chubs. <laughs> like, leeches. Yeah. Leeches. It's that guy. It's the guy who says he's a smallmouth guide and he uses live bait. Like, I don't. Yeah. I'm I'm not big on that. So I know I I actually have a handful of friends who, who uh, definitely do this, and I'm sorry, guys. I still love you, but it grinds my gears every time. So uh, that is my pick. yeah. Damn. I think I, I don't have that much of a problem with it. If you're guiding, if you have paying clients and they want to catch fish, then you should catch fish. You know, you can catch favorite. fish. Don't advertise yourself as a smallmouth guide. That is more of That's what fair. I'm saying. Okay. But I mean, isn't that yeah. taking people to do this, right? Yeah. Hmm? Yes. But yet, yeah. shut up, Pink. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. <laughs> All right. All right. Pink, All right, so round that's... four, pick three. All right. Uh, so I'm going with. Uh... Hmm. I guess I'll go with I'll go with uh, never has luck on a frog guy, <laughs> and I don't know how this is possible, but never has luck on a frog guy. <laughs> <laughs> this the conversation always comes up the same way that because it's like you can smash them on a frog most of the year, honestly, in mm-hmm, like yeah. a lot of bodies of water, and uh, there's always these guys you get in this conversation with them at the bar ramp whatever buddies that you're just like yeah dude i caught a bunch on a frog today whatever and uh you know they have they have the the tackle box with the trays that go this way and yes uh, and they got like one 1980 scum frog in there and he's like dude <laughs> i throw this on a spinning rod all the time never get bit oh <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, man, it's just, uh, I just like throwing it. I don't know. Yeah, I, just, I don't know, why, yeah, I don't know how people was. get bit on this thing, but <laughs> they love to throw it. Never caught a fish on that thing. <laughs> so you can't get bit on a frog guy, Pink? Oh, yeah. Will, you get to bring it home. So, um, Mr. Irrelevant, so this is the last pick of the draft. I'm kind of torn because I think my board plays pretty well right now on the graphic, but. So I'm trying to think if I want to do just like a chalk pick or like I have a couple that are a little more specific. Yeah, I'm going to take one that probably a lot of people don't maybe aren't super familiar with. But um, do you guys know what Tenkara is? Oh, yeah. If you're, if you're familiar. Do, with that. Yeah, yeah. So, so Tenkara is a form of fly fishing that originated in Japan. It's a fly rod but there's no reel it's the line is into the rod. So there's no reel and you have a set amount of line and that's all you can fish with. And these guys like talk about purists, like there's guys that that's all they do is 10 cara. And they think that even if you have a reel, that that is like, you're cheating the trout. Like you need to fish with this nine foot, 10 foot rod that has it's no reel. And it's just all rod and line. It's so stupid. And I've ran into these guys before. And one, you don't catch that many fish doing that because obviously you can't cast very far. You have X amount of line that you can get out. Two, you end up playing these fish into exhaustion because you're just, it's just this, you know, like let's just yeah. walk them to the bank. Like, 
how is that more ethical than having like getting to the reel on a fly rod and like get the fish in, you know, get your photo and throw it back. But I ran into a few of these guys like along the years that are like, oh, dude, yeah. Tenkara, like that's what it's about. Like I'm only fishing Tenkara. I'm like, that's so stupid. <laughs> like, you can pay me. You can pay me to do it. I'm like, that's so dumb. I'm like, granted, these guys don't last before fishing for big trout up there, like huge trout. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you're not even gonna be able to land these things. And like, so that's my pick, Tenkara guys. I don't know if a lot of people will know what that is, but if you don't know, look it up because it you'll like can watch a YouTube video on on it and be like, that's so stupid. So, yeah, that, Rod, that is a real pick. <clears throat> kind of like All a right. cane pole, I guess, which makes sense for yeah. bluegills and crop, but does not make Nuts. sense for trout fishing in rivers. Yeah. All right. So we got our picks all done. What we will do to end it, because I'm sure we all have a few left. We'll do some honorable mentions here. Yep. Could you quickly, not... before honorable mentions, before honorable mentions, can you just run through the picks quick, Adam? Yeah. Yeah. We'll run through the picks quick. So I got Will with uh, Bad Boy or Bad Boy, Bad Boat ramp etiquette person take a pick with every fish person meat whores and tankara fly fisherman i've got pinkala with danny decals i i don't even know if i need anything else i think such a solid pick one hey um the bite window guy the purist and can't get bit on a frog guy. Then I have me with early ice red lake walleye expert. The local opens co-angler. JDM tackle expert. And walleye guide who advertises as a small muff guide but uses live bait. Like if we figure out something easier to say for that, we'll put that on the graphic. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to be using like size six font. And then we got Honor with why aren't we catching anything, guy? Barstool biologist, in, also known as old school killing, uh, old school guy killing game fish. And the rigged out kayak person and only counts on a fly guy. Yep. That is what we've got for the picks. We will do some honorable mentions for what people had left. We'll just kind of reel through them quick in case anything anybody had anything good. Um, I had a couple here that I thought would get picked. Uh, Master Angler Chaser was one of them. Um, line Class World Record person. I think Will brought that up at one point. Um this was a different one uh, that I just didn't pick. I had it just in case it got really deep in the draft. But uh, the person who drills a hole by a plowed road to fish. <laughs> that one's That's pretty solid. One. I like that yeah, one. I might have missed on my last one. I could have taken yeah. that round four probably. would have been a yeah. good one. But uh, anyone cool. else got honorable mentions? I had uh... – Let's see. I had the the walleye only guys, so guys that only fish for walleyes. And uh, I mean, I guess that kind of years had a part of it, Adam. Um, then I had uh, low holers, which is more of kind of a, I guess, a river term, but guys that pull in front of you and then anchor up in front of you and fish. Uh, I had the Toyota Tacoma rod rack guy, which in Bozeman is pretty common um, yeah that, that, i think that was a good one that would have played on the graphic yeah. really good yeah because you totally could have put the tacoma with the topper and the you know double rod racks yeah I rod racks are cool, really but, yeah rod racks are cool but if you're guiding otherwise it's not that hard to take part of your fly rod um and then i had that was about it actually i didn't i didn't have a ton of them so i was happy to get what i got pink you got any extras uh I think I bled it pretty dry, but I'd like, um, I had the, uh, the all American outdoorsman who's the guy that just <laughs> talks about nothing other than like you're out fishing. And the only thing you're not talking about is that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a solid one. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the, the instant bait change guy, as soon as somebody else catches a fish, they immediately retie. Yep. <laughs> that was, those were the last two. If you fish with Cody oh. Hunter, he will catch a fish on a bait and he'll refuse to throw it for the next three hours. He'll just pick up something else. Fun you fact. See what else they're, they're biting on. 
<laughs> well, we know what you're eating. <laughs> if you can't tell, there's a little bit of animosity here for that, but <laughs> I should have put down. I should have put down only catches rocks guy. Oh, that could have. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, those guys oddly suck. specific. Those guys suck. Bunch of he, he, he legit. <laughs> he legitimately caught probably thirty to forty like rocks about this big a day. When That's we all. It's in the lake. I can't I catch any say, bigger. I will say, I have know. you seen some of the clips though? The audio of the rock going back into the lake. Chris. <laughs> it was <laughs> unreal. Dude, I, I had like at least 60 of those clips to go through. And the best one ever is I can't even remember what video it is. But when he catches the one that's actually like a softball or a basketball and he chucks it in, and it is such a distinctly <laughs> different noise. <laughs> it, was so it was so good, dude. Okay, anyways, Hunter, go All right. Ahead. All right. Um, I guess just a couple quick ones. The always on them in practice, regardless of what happens. Oh, always yeah. on them in practice. Yeah. That that guy. Um I guess we did we say we said a meat eater type guy character? Yes, no. yeah, he had the meat whore. I call them the meat whore. But I guess a somewhat spin off of that was the catch freeze throw away, never actually eat the thing. Um, yeah, which is like, I guess, a subtitle off of that. Um, oh, and I I'm ostracize myself here. Uh, the bet <laughs> net, the bad net job guy, even yeah. though there Ooh. is a YouTube video of me almost botching a giant muskie with a net. But yeah, that guy. Dude. Looking at you, Cody. You suck. You're the worst. That's a that's a tough one. That guy, that guy, will, ruin, that guy will ruin your day for sure. Life. Ruin life. life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did take it off when Cody said only counts on a fly guy, but I had just trout fishermen or fly fishermen in general. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, well, a, that's, that's a, a low community. That's a low hanging fruit, Adam. That's such a chalk pick. Like that's just I mean it, it I, I, but it's, I get it. I, I, yeah, like, I like fly I don't fly fish, but I like the aspect of fly fishing. Yeah, I there's just some don't stuff like, you can appreciate about it. No, yeah. I do appreciate it. It's the people who tell yeah, well, it's a fly only counts on a fly guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. you were right, Cody. Yeah. It's the no, people who I, tell you repeatedly they you have to try you have to fly it's fish. It's that they're they're better than you because they fly fish. Yes. And it's it's such a well documented stereotype that it's hard to get away yes. from. Yes. Yeah, it totally it exists, and it's there's no like it's real. What yeah. population yeah. of Bozeman is only counts on a fly guy? I don't know. Probably, I would say a majority. I think of the people that fish here are just are just fly fishing, you know, um, mm -hmm. and probably don't don't pick up a spinning rod too often. Um, but yeah, I'd say oh, a, good, a good chunk. Yeah, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get an email whenever this comes out. <laughs> That is no, Cody I don't. Dot, that is Cody dot Honor at gmail dot com. You can email him yeah. any complaints, or if you would like a guide trip, he's a newly found guide. He did, yeah, yeah, his electrician job. Yeah, I'm gonna, Dude, you, I'm gonna. You even took the hit in the honorable mentions there. Not even, I not even in the draft. You know, <laughs> you just went all out. <laughs> I yeah, I totally understand the uh, the fly fishing fly fishing hate. I get it. I love how Cody's. I just Cody's had some weird is... conversations with some of those guys, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. I think my favorite part about Cody's <laughs> like picks is fishing. basically Cody has one big sponsor these days, and he's like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pick all the people who are fans of the company that yeah, I'm like, you not through though. Sims has su Sims has such a big. They're such a big face in freshwater fishing in general now that it doesn't. No, really I know, yet. but it's just it's just funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll get a kick yeah. out of it. Yeah, yeah thank it's you, Patterson. <laughs> Thanks for the listen. You got to make fun of yourself. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Anything. Right, anyway, so that is the weigh in. Um, we will be doing this pretty often. Um, we'll do different topics all the time. That was a bit more in depth and intrinsic. But if any of you listeners have any ideas for other topics, just uh, slide into any of our DMs on social media. Tell us what you think we should do. And uh, we'll probably do it kind of hands off. We'll do or cuffs off. We will do kind of whatever. And even if you want it to be something not related to fishing, like maybe uh our favorite gas station snacks which is kind of related to fishing but um 
we could literally do anything. So just let us know. That's the way in. And uh, other than that, guys, do we have anything else you want to touch on before we head home? Or are we going to call her good and just get on to episode three here eventually? I think let's wrap her up. That was good. Yep. Let's send this one home. All right. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for listening. That was a fun time. Check us out on all our social media platforms. Other than that, please uh, rate and comment below. And this was another episode of Pass the Barb. Pass the Barb.